Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today what we have on the workbench is um, a fine British computer indeed um, which is the Enterprise 128 from uh, 1983 at least has been announced in 1983 but only reached the markets um, due to several uh, difficulties only by 1985 um, Intelligent Software was the um, company uh, designed and produced this um, fine British machine again um, distributed by Enterprise Computer which actually went bankrupt uh, back in 86 but the machine uh, had some characteristics here we have the original power supply uh, 9.5 volts um, at uh, two arms. Uh, yeah, the machine had uh, great specifications and characteristics. We're gonna go over this uh, short video today. So let's start by taking uh, uh, a look around the computer. You can see the ROM bay on the uh, left side, which is uh, a slot um, right there. Um, I'm gonna raise it to have a better look but let's take a look around the computer um, the ports interfaces are um, the way it should they should be we can find a big red reset button uh, two joystick ports control ports printer centronics we can find a serial um, interface um, or port um, connection for the cassette player and an RGB monitor no sockets though I think those are made the cheap way um, TV tuner of course and the power jack right on the other side um, yeah it's just the edge connector you have to place um, uh, devices on um, or connection for the connections to be made no sockets whatsoever um, and again this machine uh, was made in England um, on the uh, left side we can have a chance to get a better look now the ROM um, cartridge interface uh, port and on the other side uh, is the expansion port which again it's just the edge connector um, yeah on the right side that is so nothing is missing um, as for the interfaces um, very robust very good uh, construction and the joystick works like um, um, the, uh, the cursor keys in this case because we have a full text editor I'm gonna power the machine up so we can see uh, when it comes up with the simple word processor uh, that comes um, within the ROM and uh, yeah the cursor um, you can find no cursor keys around the keyboard the cursor keys and the moving around the, uh, the screen uh, can be um, uh, done only by uh, using the joystick which is uh, pretty cool and um, this is the welcome screen and by hitting the uh, big uh, space button um, space bar we can go over the word processor which comes up because we don't have any cartridge inserted so we have no basic for the moment uh, I put some stuff on the screen like a document I need to save um, in this case I don't have a cassette player attached so I'm just trying to do it hypothetically um, so in this case we could save our work uh, in order to load um, our text back or another document it would be F1 and again we need to type the name of the file and again hypothetically we should have it on the screen like this um, the printing now uh, if I remember this right is F3 we, we need to print out something and um, again hypothetically if we had a printer we could do it there is a stop key 
and I'm yeah F3 for print right and um, F8 for stopping any process uh, quite um, interesting so I'm just uh, pressing keys to see that everything is um, every key is working and um, yeah we can also go over the 80 column mode uh, or the 40 column mode and this is F5, F6 and that would be all so F1 to F8 all the, the, the keys, all the functions that you need and here is a list of the functions uh, when you have to go over some document and you, ha you need to create paragraphs um, to move to paragraphs, uh, justify, do whatever and um, yeah uh, if we press start uh, basic there is no uh, reaction because we need to um, actually work with uh, basic cartridge installed so let me do, do uh, that and see um, w if the cartridge first of all works um, F8 by the way stops every process and um, if we can write some programs in basic and see what happens so interesting uh, for um, the business user this uh, light word processor is quite flexible few, just a few function keys basic functionality save uh, load print and change of columns and resolution um, is all they wanted back then right so let's take a look at the uh, Ixos basic um, version 2.1 um, which runs um, as a very uh, strong and flexible interpreter it can support long um, command names for example you can type um, clear screen instead just of CLS like it used to be on other systems and it can support multitasking um, in cooperation with the two dedicated ASICs chips uh, for this purpose I mean the Nick chip and the Dave chip uh, named after their designers the Nick chip um, takes away some workload uh, from the CPU when it comes to graphics and the Dave chip um, handles the sound and uh, memory paging and also takes away um, uh, some workload from the CPU um, the machine can support 40 or 80 text modes um, those two modes for uh, the editor uh, in place uh, as we said before the ROM doesn't contain um, the basic interpreter but it comes in some cartridge uh, in this cartridge we actually placed um, inside previously and instead it contains ROM contains full screen editor and simple word processor we've seen that before um, so what is impressive about this basic is uh, it handles um, programs in the structured way um, and kind of reminded me the Sinclair Super Basic um, we used to have in the Sinclair QL back in the day which was also very flexible uh, basic and actually um, uh, supported uh, procedures and functions and structured programming like uh, this basic here and it is a pity they, this machine didn't make it out in the markets although they went over some vast um, advertising and um, mostly uh, focusing on the fact of, uh, of the capabilities of multitasking and all that but still didn't make it and as I was trying to put some uh, little code uh, in place uh, I saw this nicht verstanden, um, which probably means I don't understand or in computer terms uh, it means um, unknown command so this uh, machine contains a German ROM I believe but anyways back to the loop when I created the loop in order to print something silly on the screen uh, you can see the structure the paragraph um, the machine creates for 
uh, the body of the actual command and the for next statement loop um, it's absolutely structured and um, that's the way it should be and if you have large quantity of data big amount of uh, uh, code um, and data this is believe me very very useful and that's why uh, that was some kind of evolution back then uh, the uh, interpreter can support and um, hold structured programming because it nests um, uh, the loops and the procedures and the function functions given um, in such a way to make your life easier when it comes to editing afterwards. And not only that, this basic can have uh, global variables among different applications and programs and it can use those global variables when editing and across uh, multiple uh, applications running together pretty impressive indeed um, to run in parallel and handle variables at the same time impressive loop um, and uh, a structured uh, compiler after all right back to the joystick um, thing this is something that we all have to face I guess at some point the uh, cup of the joystick this part uh, tends to get loose pretty easily and uh, most of us have already lost it somehow so I came up uh, with an idea to replace it this is the original one which uh, for the record uh, it was green um, on the uh, Enterprise 64 model black for the Enterprise 128 so yeah I came up with this idea using this rubber uh, pure rubber thing that I took from um, my motorcycle's battery hose when it was new um, and gives me some precision over uh, moving when moving around the screen and it comes in black or, or red whatever um, but I think it's a nice idea to put it there it's really steady it gives you some precision moving around the screen uh, on these uh, full screen text editor yeah, I think it's cool idea I'm gonna uh, post um, a, a picture to show you exactly uh, where I found it or where you can find it uh, and it's yeah this thing over there <laughs> you can grab it from a battery and that will be all the overall construction of the PCB is fine it was uh, very well designed the only um, thing you can easily tell by looking at the 64 and the 128 boards uh, is just the um, adding of the memory the extra memory the uh, 64 megabytes plus for the 128 machine I do believe it was a shame this machine didn't make it out in the markets eventually uh, some things went wrong um, maybe the timing everybody was established back then Amstrad was already um, at the top Sky High Sinclair at the same time uh, Commodore uh, new Atari models came um, and it was a, um, around the same time that Amiga has been announced in 87 um, I don't know if um, this could have a better luck but uh, it should have a better luck uh, if you ask me um, multitasking um, special graphics uh, chip to help the CPU uh, some special chip, uh, chip to uh, help with the sound and all that it was uh, innovative it was advanced flexible and powerful machine again it was a shame didn't make it so thanks for watching guys I hope you liked it uh, and um, do subscribe if you will and if you like the contents of this channel uh, to keep it running um, so have a nice one and again thank you very much for watching bye